In Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather Part 2, after a day of business, the head of the Corleone crime family, Michael Corleone, returns home to his wife and children. Michael goes into his room and begins to undress and unwind. His wife is already in bed, and the bedside lamp is on. Michael looks at a charming picture his son drew for him, and then lovingly caresses his wife's cheeks, who has either been woken up or was not fully asleep. Kay, his wife, then asks why the window drapes are open. Michael looks at her, then the drapes, then clearly sees something amiss as within a split second he's on the floor, the ex-marine performing a low crawl as a shower of bullets flood the room, smashing the windows. Michael pulls his wife from the bed and awaits the flurry of gunfire to end. Michael subsequently spends most of the rest of the film trying to determine who tried to have him murdered, and after a lengthy investigation he comes to the conclusion that the hit was ordered by his business partner Hyman Roth, mainly as revenge for the assassination of Las Vegas tycoon Mel Green, as ordered by Michael at the end of the first film. Michael is shrewd enough to work out that for his enemies to get that close to him, someone on the inside must have been helping. As he tells Tom, the former consigliere of the Colleone crime family and the man who Michael trusts more than anyone else in the world, the people who work for him are businessmen. Their loyalty is to money, not people, so the betrayal could have been done by anyone. Eventually, Michael works out that it was his own brother Fredo who had conspired with his enemies. How much Fredo knew about the plan and whether he actually knew Michael would be assassinated is up for debate, but that's a conversation for another day. So it's clear that Hyman Roth was pulling the strings with his enforcer Joni Ola and using Fredo to get close to Michael by manipulating him into giving information that is used to try to assassinate Michael. The assassins are found dead shortly after the murder attempt, even though Michael gave strict instructions to his bodyguard Rocco that they must be kept alive. However, one key question in the film goes unanswered. Who actually opened the drapes? Clearly the drapes were opened in order to get a better shot at Michael. And as Kay is the one who asked the question, it suggests she initially closed them before going to bed so we can rule her out. We see Michael enter the room with the drapes already open, so it wasn't him. And with the first two Godfather movies being showered in such detail and nuance, I think we can all rule out that this is simply a plot hole. So let's take a look at the suspects and determine who was the individual who opened the drapes so the shooters could get a better shot at Michael. Number one, the main suspect, Fredo himself. We eventually find out that Fredo was indeed a traitor, and shortly after the assassination attempt, the two would-be killers are found dead outside of Fredo's house. Fredo takes a call from Johnny Ola late at night, where Johnny Ola says we need some more help, and Fredo whispers back, you lied to me, and hangs up the phone. When Michael eventually confronts him, Fredo insists he didn't know it was going to be a hit, but he also revealed that he was sick of being treated as stupid, sick of being stepped over with Michael becoming the Don instead of him, and that in Roth's plan there was something in it for him. So some conflicting statements there. It's difficult to gauge whether Fredo knew, either consciously or subconsciously, that Roth would try to kill Michael. Out of interest, in the original script of the film, Tom Hagen tells Michael that Fredo thought it was going to be a kidnapping and nothing more. But either way, Fredo's reputation as being weak and incompetent must have been well known to those inside and outside the family, given his failure to protect his father during an assassination attempt, allowing Mo Green to strike him without retaliation, and being unable to control his drunk, bimbo wife. It makes sense for Johnny Ola to approach Fredo, perhaps even utilising Fredo's insecurities over being stepped over by his father. However, knowing how stupid he is, would Roth really put all his eggs in one basket with Fredo? Could he really trust Fredo to give him the information he required, sneak into Michael's room and open the drapes, and murder the two assassins afterwards? It's unlikely, and Fredo's phone call with Ola suggests he didn't know the full extent of Roth's plans. And surely, even someone as dumb as Fredo would surely know that the only reason someone would want him to open a pair of drapes was for a shooter to get a clear shot at Michael. So if you're in the camp of people that think Fredo didn't know it was going to be a hit, how on earth could it be him who opened the drapes? It's possible, I guess, that Fredo gave Johnny Ola information about accessing the compound, allowing the assassins in, 
and then murdered the two killers out of panic once the hit had failed. Maybe he did know all along a hit was planned and efficiently bumped off the two assassins out of self-preservation so there were no witnesses. And maybe he somehow managed to do it with nobody in the complex witnessing the murders. Nobody witnessing Fredo Corleone overpower two trained killers. It all sounds very unlikely, doesn't it? So let's continue the list of suspects. And next in line, it could have been one of Fredo's many men. The man was a Kappa regime. In fact, according to the family tree shown during Michael's trial, he was technically the underboss of the Corleon crime family, so he would have had a lot of men working under him. He could have had one of his men open the drapes, and then that same man take out the two assassins, with Fredo then killing him or paying him off. However, it seems unlikely that Fredo could give a Corleone underling enough incentive, whether through bribery or intimidation, to betray the head of the crime family. Everybody knew of Fredo's incapabilities. They would surely know to take part in such a scheme would blow up in their faces. A third option would be one of Michael's men doing the deed. But which one? Who could get close enough? Al Neri is a possibility, though this again is highly unlikely. Though it's not made as clear in the movie, the Godfather book makes it abundantly clear that Al Neri has unwavering loyalty to Michael. He is essentially the Luca Brasi from Don Vito Corleone's time. He is completely dedicated to Michael. In fact, in The Godfather Part 3, we see that even decades later, Al Neri is still by Michael's side, and he was trusted with the most intimate and private of jobs, such as the eventual assassination of Fredo Corleone. It is still possible, though, as when Michael speaks to Tom, and Tom mentions Michael's men, he specifically mentions Neri and Rocco, and yet Michael doesn't rule it out. Another option would be Tom Hagen himself. An earlier idea for The Godfather Part 3 did have Michael and Tom turning against each other. But again, to suggest that Tom had anything to do with the assassination attempt on Michael is ridiculous. He was not a man of violence, and was completely loyal to Michael, considered it the utmost honour to be called a brother by him. And the fact that he was intentionally kept in the dark by Michael in so many situations reiterated Michael's trust in Tom when Michael would flash out the rats in his family. As with Tom not knowing anything, he could not have been part of the treacherous schemes. There is one final possibility as to who facilitated the assassination attempt by opening the drapes. And that is this man, Rocco Lampone. He is the head of security at the Tahoe compound. That means... All the guards and security at the complex belong to him, and it is his failure that allowed Michael to be targeted. Even though Michael gave strict instructions that the assassins be found alive, they were found with their throat slit, suggesting they trusted someone enough to get close enough to them to slit their throats. He could have easily let the assassins in to kill Michael. And wasn't it either him or his men that eventually found the killers? Rocco doesn't have the close trusting relationship with Michael that the likes of Tom has. He doesn't have a backstory in the book that cements him as a man of loyalty like Al Neri, but he did have an entire regime under his control. Roth, smart as he is, never to rely on just one operative, could have gotten Johnny Ola to use Rocco to let the assassins in to kill Michael, and then have Rocco bump off the idiot Fredo once he outlived his usefulness with Rocco's apparent reward being the takeover of the Corleone operations. Towards the end of the film, Michael sends Rocco on a suicide mission to terminate Hyman Roth. It is clear that there is almost nil chance of Rocco getting out of the situation alive, and he doesn't, being quickly shot to death after he kills Roth. Why would someone so high up in the Corleone family undertake such an assignment? Perhaps he was confronted by Michael for being a part of the hit, and he gave Rocco an offer he couldn't refuse. Either he assassinates Roth, and if he's successful, he'll get a pass for his betrayal and would be banished from the family. And if he was killed in doing so, his family would not be harmed and would be financially taken care of. And if Rocco refused, he'd be killed on the spot. Or maybe Rocco was innocent, and maybe he was told to go on the suicide mission because of his failure as head of security when Michael and his wife were almost killed. Maybe Michael never trusted Rocco again after his slip at the complex, and the suicide mission was Michael's way of hitting two birds with one stone, by getting rid of both Roth and Rocco. So who do you think opened the drapes to allow the shooters to get a better shot? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.